Hello grade tens, welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. In today's video, we're going to look at a few past paper questions relating to chemical bonding. Let's jump right in. In front of you, you see a table that I've recreated from a past paper. I have changed some of the questions um, and let's just fill in this table. So in an exam setup, they will label the little blocks um, so that, for example, they'll say 1.1 over here and they'll say 1.2 over yeah, just so that you know, you know, which block refers to which question. So 1.2, 1.3, and so on. But we're just going to fill in the table as is, um, working from the first row down. So let's jump right in. So the only thing I'm given in row one is NAF, and they tell me that that's the chemical formula. So let's start by filling in the chemical name. Na is sodium. And F is fluorine. So when bonded to the metal, it's going to become fluoride. So remember, when the anion, when the non-metal bonds to the metal, it was fluorine. The end of the name changes to ide because they're married now. They're together. Sodium fluoride is the chemical name. Type of bonding. Now, how we decide that is we look at sodium. Sodium is a metal, as I've already mentioned. And fluorine over here is a non-metal. So you need to know that metal and non-metal is ionic bonding. Okay, ionic bonding. That is between a metal and a non-metal. Then they want the lowest structure. So they want the final diagram for sodium fluoride. I'm just going to draw the in-between steps for us as well, just to show you basically how we get there. Sodium is a metal. When we are drawing Lewis dot diagrams or Lewis dot structures, we use valence electrons. If you need a recap on this, I will link my video up above where I go through ionic bonding, Lewis dot structures, but we use the number of valence electrons, which we find on the periodic table. Sodium, the Roman group numerals for sodium, it's in group one, so it has one valence electron. It needs to give away one electron in order to become full, in order to have a full outer energy level. Fluorine has seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just wanted to show the periodic table to show you where I got that from. So one Roman, uh, one Roman group numeral, one valence electron for sodium and seven for fluorine. Now, because we know ionic bonding is going to take place, it will not be the sharing of electrons. Remember, ionic bonding is the transfer of electrons. So the metal transfers their electrons or its electron in this case to the non-metal you need to draw in the arrow if they ask you for the formation of sodium fluoride you would need to draw the arrow to show the transfer of electrons but as you can see in our question we just want the lowest structure of the final compound of sodium fluoride so this beginning part that i'm drawing is not necessary i'm just drawing you drawing it for you to show you how i got there if they ask for the formation or the steps then you would need to show this so sodium essentially loses an electron forming n a plus in a plus because it's lost one electron and fluorine which originally had seven valence electrons one two three four five six seven has now gained that extra electron because it gains one electron it's going to have a charge of minus one and that is your final diagram that is what you're going to draw in the table if you need some more practice on how to do these, again, make sure you check out my video linked above. It's also going to be in the description below on ionic bonding. Then they want molar mass. So the molar mass is represented by the symbol big M, and that is basically based on the atomic masses of the elements that make up the compound. So we look at the periodic table and we look at the atomic mass numbers, which is the big numbers associated with each element. So sodium has an atomic mass number of 23, it's the big number. C, relative atomic mass, is the bigger number. And fluorine is 19. So we add those two together. There's only one sodium, so 23, and one fluorine, so 19. And that's going to give us 42 grams per mole. That is the unit for molar mass. Right, row one of the table complete. Let's move on to oxygen gas. Now, oxygen gas is one of our diatomic molecules. So have no fear of ice cold beer. Just a silly rhyme to remember the diatomic molecules. So hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, oxygen, iodine, chlorine, and bromine. So the chemical formula for oxygen is O2. Okay, just remember that it's a diatomic molecule, diatomic gas, diatomic element. The type of bonding, well, 
It's an oxygen bonded to an oxygen. So the type of bonding is a non-metal with a non-metal, so that is covalent bonding. And you will recall, if you've seen my video on covalent bonding, that covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons. Now again, the table only asks for the final Lewis structure or Lewis dot diagram of the oxygen molecule. So I'm not, you don't need to show me the formation or the process, which I'm going to be showing you now. You just need to show me the final molecule, but I'm going to show you the formation to help you understand it. So each oxygen atom has six valence electrons. You look at your periodic table to know that each oxygen has six valence electrons. Six valence electrons, which we're going to represent. I'm going to use dots for this one and crosses for this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. This one I'm going to use crosses. One, two, three, four. Then we start again. Five and six. Now remember, covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons, which means we're not going to have brackets. In our final diagram, we're not going to have charges because that's ionic bonding. The sharing of electrons means that some of these electrons are going to be shared. So they're going to be drawn in the middle of the two oxygen atoms. And we need to decide how many electrons will be shared. Now, the way you decide this is each oxygen has six valence electrons. So it has six. And you need to think about how many it needs in order to reach its full stable structure, its full outer orbitals, outer energy levels. So each of them needs to reach the octet structure, which is eight. So if it has six, it needs two more. So it needs two more. And this one is exactly the same. It has six, but it needs two more. So if we think about it like this, if each of them need two more, these two over here, can be shared with the one on the right. And these two over here can be shared with the one on the left. So in other words, both of them are going to be contributing two electrons to be shared. So both of those, the ones I've highlighted in blue, the ones I've highlighted in yellow, those are going to be shared and they are basically going to be pulled to the middle. And the others, you see those two dots over there, those two dots over there, we draw them as is. They are not shared, they are lone pairs. These are not shared. These are not shared. Okay, so what you're seeing over here is that now each oxygen is eight. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm counting the crosses in for the oxygen on the left because it's sharing it. Same thing for the oxygen on the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And these two dots over here, it is sharing. So each oxygen now has eight it has reached octet structure. So basically you can see there's a shared pair, there's a shared pair. So the Cooper structure will look like this, okay, without the lone pairs. It's a double bond. So that is the diagram we're going to draw in the table. Moving on to the molar mass, I just want to point out the differences between the first Lewis structure and the second. Can you see in the first one we did ionic bonding? So we see brackets and charges. In the second one we did covalent bonding. So there's no brackets, no charges. They're sharing electrons. Okay, cool. Molar mass of oxygen. It's the big M that we're looking for. We look for the atomic masses on the periodic table. You will know, well, you will see that oxygen has 16. That's its atomic, atomic mass or relative atomic mass. Go check out a periodic table. And we're going to times that by 2. Because remember, it's O2. So that is 32 grams per mole. That is the unit for molar mass or molecular mass. Moving on to number three, lithium fluoride. Now lithium is Li. It has a charge of plus one. Fluoride is fluorine. It has a charge of minus one. How did I know that? I looked at my periodic table. So in red, you can see the valence electrons and then the charges would be minus one, sorry, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. So just think of it like this. The plus one means that these elements, these atoms need to get rid of one electron to be stable. Plus two means they need to get rid of two electrons to be stable. The minus one means it needs one electron to be stable. Minus two, it needs two electrons to be stable. So if we look at the question that we were doing at the moment, which is lithium fluoride, I said that lithium is plus one. OK, 
Okay, you can go take a look at the previous slide if you want to go see the charge. And fluoride is minus one. That means lithium needs to give away one electron to be stable. Fluorine needs one electron. So plus one minus one, that gives me a neutral compound of zero. So therefore my chemical formula is LIF. Okay, if you need more help on naming, I will link my naming video above that will really help you be able to practice this and know when to put like a two here or two here or whatever. It's definitely not the case in this example because lithium gives away an electron and fluorine gets an electron and then they're happy and they're full and they're stable. So LIF. Type of bonding, lithium is a metal, fluorine is a non-metal. So again, we've got ionic bonding. Now the Lewis structure, I'm going to do it on the next page and then we're just going to write the final one over there. So this is ionic bonding as we've mentioned because metal and non-metal. So therefore there will be a transfer of electrons, not a share. So lithium is going to transfer its electron to fluorine. So the final diagram which you will draw in the table will be Li+, plus. you can put brackets around you if you want, and then fluorine, this one has to have brackets with its original valence electrons, which will be seven in total. As you can see, I've drawn them in with dots. And then that extra X, that extra electron that it got from the lithium and fluorine gets an electron, so it has a charge of minus. This is your final answer that will go in the table. Again, note how ionic bonding has brackets and charges. Then to work out the molar mass of lithium fluoride, we look at lithium, seven, fluoride, 19. So the molar mass is seven plus 19. Remember, it's just one seven because there's just one Li. It's one 19 because there's one F. So seven plus 19 is 26 grams per mole. 26 grams per mole. Right, our last one, NH3. Now this is a compound where you need to know the, the name for NH3. It's quite a common one. It's going to pop up all the way to matric and it is ammonia. Ammonia. Now you need to think very carefully about the type of bonding. Nitrogen is a non-metal. It's on the right hand side of the periodic table. Hydrogen, even though it's on the left hand side of the periodic table, it is also a non-metal. Remember, it's the exception. All the metals are on the left hand side, except for hyd hydrogen is on the left, but it's a non-metal. So non-metal and a non-metal is covalent bonding. And remember, when we do covalent bonding, that is the sharing of electrons. We're going to see electrons being pulled to the middle to be shared. We're not going to see brackets. So let's do it on the next slide. Now, ammonia has one nitrogen plus three hydrogens. One, two, three. Remember, drawing this formation, drawing the process is not necessary for the table. They just want the final diagram, but I want to show you so you know how it works. Nitrogen has a number of valence electrons of five. Check the periodic table if you don't believe me. So one, two, three, four, five. We know that it needs three more. So it has five. Remember in total, an octet structure is eight. So if it has five and it needs eight in total, that means it needs three more. And it's actually perfect because each hydrogen has one valence electron. So if each of them have one and they have three hydrogens in total, each of those hydrogens are going to go here, here and here to share the electrons with nitrogen. Remember, covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons. So we've got nitrogen, the original five around nitrogen. Then there's an open space over here, so the one hydrogen is going to share over there. There's an open space over here, so the other hydrogen is going to share over there. There's a third open space over here, so the third hydrogen is going to share over there. And as we can see, there's a single bond, there's a single bond, there's a single bond. So the Cooper structure will look like this. Hydrogen, 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 and we've got a lone pair over there, a lone pair of electrons. And there we go, that is ammonia. Again, covalent bonding, so no brackets. Molar mass of ammonia. Now we're going to take the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14, and we're going to add the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1, but we're going to multiply it by 3. 
And you might ask why? Because there's three hydrogens, three hydrogen atoms in every one um, molecule or one compound, one ammonia molecule. So that is going to be 17 grams per mole. And there we go. We've done an exam question. And this was a really awesome one because it basically summarized ionic bonding and um, covalent bonding. If you'd like to see more of those, remember to check out the link in the description for, an exam for videos with more examples of both. Please, please, please let me know what else you want to see in the comments. I'm here to help you. And I really hope that you've subscribed so that I can give you more content like this and so that you can ace your exams. I hope, you see, I hope to see you guys on the next video. Sending all my love. Bye, everyone.